Hi everyone, this is Dave AC, dot blip dot TV, and this is my V blog, 126, for Friday the 17th of November, 2010. And straight away, happy birthday, Lewis. Okay, let's get on with the uh, episode. Oh, and if, by the way, I look a little bit, uh, a little bit more colourful today, it's not because I'm warm, it's hovering around zero here in Manchester in the UK. Uh, it's because, uh, and by zero, I mean zero centigrade. It's because I watched back a couple of my last episodes. I always watched them back, but I watched them back on the YouTube version, and the colour looked a little bit washed out. So I've just tweaked the colour settings a little bit much. So no, I'm not ready to go on Strictly Come Dancing. I haven't been spray tanning my face. It's just um, I've tweaked the colour settings a little bit. Okay, uh, it's Dave AC. Dot blip dot TV, and there will be a wine at the end in around about 15 minutes total. Now, uh, I haven't got a DVD for you today. I haven't got a book for you today. I haven't got classical music for you today. But I've got an exciting piece of tech. Well, it's exciting to me, and I hope you'll be interested. So we're going to go podcasting news, quite a bit of tech, and wine. And uh, then let's get on with it. OK, well, there isn't a new uh, Doctor Who pod shop out. I think 2.30 is still the most recent one. But there is a new uh, piece of uh, podcasting from uh, Art Trap Productions from Lewis. And that is The Hitchhiker's Guide to British Sci-Fi, Episode 9. And yours truly, Dave AC, is uh, helping as a guest host for Lewis uh, to do that show. Now, let me go to Lucy's Art Trap page just to read this and get it right. Uh, by the way, that's, there's no www, it's arttrap.com. And uh, I'm just reading from the link about this just to get it right. Episode 9 of The Hitchhiker's Guide to British Sci-Fi, Sarah Jane Adventures Series 4 and Space Pre Precinct Reviewed. Uh, reviewing the Sarah Jane Adventures from TV and the Space Precinct was a DVD box set. And we also discussed quite a few other British series. And of course, I've gotten a correction being Dave AC on the show. And thank you, Tim Jury. Um, I said one of the shows we were talking about was The Misfits. And it wasn't. It's Misfits. And just another word of warning. Um, when we we're recommending whether people watch these shows, Misfits is actually an adult show. And you need to be at least 16 to watch that one. So just take bear that in mind when you're listening to our little review. So uh, I enjoyed being on that, uh, Lewis, and hopefully I'll be on a few more of the Hitchhiker's Guide to British Sci-Fi. Of course, available from Art Trap. It's uh, also available from iTunes. And of course, that's where the Cult and Collective podcast is available from, the one I co-host with Ian the Sixth Doctor. And there we meet every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, the Sunday that's just gone, we did about Merlin, another UK-British sci-fi series, Merlin Series 3, which has just ended here. So we did about two hours, ten minutes. If you're going to listen to that, I would suggest, as always with these shows, subscribe to us on iTunes and download it. Because if you're streaming, you've got about 30 minutes of other news items before we get to the main topic. So if you download it, if if you're listening to the show, you know, oh, well into the future, when that news is not necessarily um, of any, much value to you, you can slide the slider along 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get to the actual start of the main topic. We also midweek put up another one of our little Christmas treats, the fourth one, uh, and this is again Ian Six Doctor, Mike Randall Thor, and myself Dave AC doing another one of our past Christmas commentaries, and this time it's a commentary on Voyage of the Damned. So I hope you'll seek that out. Remember, you play your legal copy of Voyage of the Damned, turn the volume down to a low setting and play our audio whilst you listen to it, and hope you'll enjoy that. Now, this coming Sunday, which is the 19th of December, we're doing Doctor Who. Yes, is the Doctor, but for search engine purposes, Doctor Who, this is your life. And for this episode, we're just sticking to what we've gleaned about the Doctor through all these different incarnations, 
on the television, from the television shows only. And I'll explain why, uh, how we're going to get round the other bits in a minute. Then on Boxing Day, that's the day after Christmas, the 26th of December, we're going to do our A Christmas Carol, the Doctor Who Christmas Special Review. And then on the 2nd of January, we'll go back and finish the Doctor Who This Is Your Life, talking about what we've learnt about the Doctor from audio adventures and from the books and comics indeed. So um, that's... Uh, a sort of follow-up show and one more on the 9th of January we will be reviewing our sci-fi year so we'll be reviewing what we think of 2010 oh and let me just say one more because it links into the Hitchhiker's Guide to British Sci-Fi I mentioned the Misfits well on the 16th of January Ian will be running that show because I'll be at a family event and um, it's going to be an explicit show uh, talking about Misfits, which is, of course, a show that contains adult themes. So that was for the 16th of January. And all these take place at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All of them take place on Talk Show ID 54821. OK, a couple of bits of uh, tech information before... Um, information. <laughs> I like that. Information. Uh, never mind. You'll know if you've listened to the Hitchhiker's Guide or uh, anything else, you'll know what I'm talking about. Our Voyage of the Dam. Some tech news. Uh, Firefox. If you're not using the beta version of Firefox 4, then Firefox 3 is updated to version 3.6.13. Another browser, Opera, has gone come out of beta with their latest version. Ooh, shouted that. Uh, Opera 11. So if you want to try a different browser, Opera 11 is now out of beta and should be quite stable. And one other piece of news uh, for tech is that um, Apple have announced that the Mac iStore will open for business on January the 6th. So that is that tech news. Now, um, I'm going to now talk about my exciting tech. And it's hardware. Yes, tech hardware on davac.tv. And it's this. I've updated to a proper free sat box. Now, I did have a satellite box, but it did, didn't have any recording facilities. And it wasn't a proper free sat box. So it didn't have all the... Um, the channel guides on it and so on. So I bought that earlier today and I've been fitting it out and I've got some pictures that I've taken uh, of uh, the, uh, the actual equipment itself and I'll talk a little bit about it. Now I'm going to move this camera around. I've got to be very careful because it's a couple of times stopped on me and I've had to start again. Okay, so here we go. Not shouting the camera, David. Let's go quickly. There is some of the information on the side. Uh, simultaneous viewing of one channel while recording another. HDMI output uses the new um, uh, DB, DVB S2 as well as DB. That will be for the future. Ethernet port for the internet. Uh, digital audio output. It says massive. I don't think it is. 320 gig hard drive. There is actually a 500 gig drive version, but I got this one discounted by another 25%. It was about £230. That's about $300. There we go. Some of the equipment in it. There's the box itself. We've got um, the HDMI socket there, the digital audio there, couple of SCAR sockets if you don't want to make use of the high definition. And it's got three, what appear to be three satellite inputs here, but there aren't really. Uh, the first one, then the second one is for loop, or loop through, and then the second one here. What it means is this, because you can record one satellite channel while watching another, you need two feeds from your satellite disk two independent feeds. If you haven't, you can loop one through and it allows you a limited 
recording of one channel if it's on the same bouquet as another. But basically, to get the most use out of this, you need an LMB on your dish that has more than one feed. Uh, that's slightly better view, isn't it, of the HDMI socket than that. And there is the internet uh, uh, info because it will play um, the BBC iPlayer and ITV player software. There's the remote, rather nice. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. And here's me setting it up. There's my Toshiba 42 inch TV. And if it's not entirely in focus, that's me taking the pictures. Did a very, very, very quick channel search within a minute or so, it seemed. And you can sort by channels. And there is the uh, the guide setting up. And this they've set up channel 1, 901 and 903 to be a placeholder, as it were, for when you're watching catch up programming, or as they call it, on demand. Now, I am in, uh, connected up to the internet just yet. So, there we are. I think that's the last picture. Yeah, come back, David. Let me just get that out of my way. Let me just tell you a little bit from, um, and I'm reading now from the joinfreesat.com site. Let me just read the address out. It's www.joinfreesat, so one word, .co.uk, uh, a great little site that tells you about new channels that are coming up. But one of the things about this um, this Foxat uh, machine is it does automatic updates. It finds new channels as they come on. So let, let's see what it says about this. Um, the Humax Foxat uh, receiver is the first FreeSat PVR twin tuner, 320 gig hard drive receiver from Humax. Sleek black unit, yes, dual tuners, um, and it tells you some of the technical things here that um, it really is good. It upscales as well, that's another thing. When you're watching a standard definition channel, it upscales it to sort of pseudo HD. So really, uh, I'm looking forward to making use of that. And of course, on Christmas Day, while um, we've got the family around, I suppose I'll have to record Doctor Who. And uh, one last look, I think the remote control is rather sleek and flashy, rather like that. And uh, it didn't take any time at all to set up. Of course, I was replacing an old satellite machine with this one. I don't think I've got it. Have I got it down? There's the one. It doesn't look that old, actually, because it's, um, it's quite a posh one. But um, it doesn't have any of the um, the digital guides and um, it's really getting a bit clunky in its operating system because the firm that made that no longer support it so it hasn't had a software upgrade for about 18 months two years so it's getting a little bit dodgy and you have to do a lot of manual setting on it this one hopefully will keep itself up to date well we're now 13 and a half minutes but do I worry? No, I do not, because now YouTube allows over 15 minutes. I'm going to keep it around the 15 to 16 minute mark, but I don't have to stop that last second before it hits 15 minutes. Although, again, as Tim told me, it wasn't that critical before. OK, we've now got the wine. Now, I'm going to say from the start that um, I did have a little taste of it before because it is cold here. It's the house has got the heating on, but it's not particularly warm. And this wine really hasn't warmed itself up yet. Well, let's have a look at the bottle. I think that's pronounced Montagne. I'm not sure, but it's from saint Emilion. It's a Grand Cru de Bordeaux. Look at that. How posh is that? 2009, and it's 13.5%, which is quite strong for a French Bordeaux. And I don't know, is that going to focus for me? Focus thing. Uh, I'm going to stop there because it's being naughty for me. Ah, oh, there we are. Oh. Okay, let's have a little taste. 
So as I say, I'm a little bit concerned that it might be still a little bit cold and not really giving me its full potential. We've got quite a nice musty sort of uh, earthy smell coming off it. More of that than fruit. A little bit of um, sort of a berry, red berry. Mm, let's have a taste. Mm. Oh, this, it's actually quite well integrated. There, there is the fruit, but there's that background uh, tannin and um, sort of slight vanilla edge. And I guess I am getting, I think it's the spices on the back. I am getting some. I am getting some spicy notes and it's a long finish. Always difficult to try and give wordage to 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 say taste because I, I, I'm obviously a complete amateur at this. All I am is a person who enjoys his wine and enjoys a variety of wines. And in this last two years, I've made the, every effort to try different wines. So I'm not always drinking the same wine. But coming to put into words is, is always difficult. Let me just read what it says on the back of the label. We've shown it you already. You could have paused the frame at that point. Uh, ruby red colour with purplish reflections. Aromas of red, uh, red fruits. Yeah. And a note of spice. Yeah. Um, ample in the mouth with... Um, is that something gun rip tannins? It's got a terrible font on here. I'm actually reading. With ripped and melted tannins. Not quite sure what that says. But it says see it says here, serve around eighteen degrees uh, centigrade. Uh, lovely with beef fillet a lamb. Well, it is definitely too cold this. It's not really showing it its best. Now, but it was a bargain. Um, got it from Asda, that's like Walmart in the States. Normally it's supposed to be £13.50 uh, and they were selling it at £6. So that means I paid the equivalent of ten under $10 for what is really an $18 wine. So at £6, that means I paid €7 Euros for what is in effect a, um, a €15 Euro wine. So I'm very pleased with it. I've got a feeling that this has got to, a lot more to offer me later tonight when it's warmed up. The house has got a little bit warmer. But one last taste. There's a bit of class about that. And there is that nice integration of the fruit and um, the tannins. When that balance is right, and when you've got that little bit of extra warmth coming through, because most French wines are only 12, 12 and a half percent, this is 13 and a half percent, and it's not a nice long finish. And I've had a nice long finish. I'm up to 18 and a half minutes, but do I care? No, because I'm hoping YouTube will still accept devac.blip.tv episode 126, and uh, I'm going to go and play with my satellite machine in a minute. So, with that, catch you next week, and uh, if you don't catch my next show, uh, Happy Christmas to you if you celebrate Christmas and all the best for 2011. But try and catch the next show. Bye.